Hello Bookstack, today I want to review the first book I read this year. Alright, so uh, the first book that I actually started and finished this year wasn't the first book I started, but it was the first one that I actually started and finished in this year was Seven Brief Lessons in Physics by Carlo Rovelli. Um, it's, you know, I tell people I read a book in physics and they're like, oh man, wow, that's weird that you would read a book. I mean, look at this thing. It's not, it's not very thick. All right. Um, these were actually written as newspaper articles that he, after he wrote them, he packaged them and put them into a book. So one kind of interesting thing about that, writing it for a newspaper article, it's written for the general public. So it's not very technical. I think he does a very good job of balancing out the technical terms and issues and everything uh, and, and really making it very easy to read. So it's not very high level, it's also not very low level. I think it's kind of a, a, a sweet spot to where if you know physics, you can read it and enjoy it, I think. If you don't know physics, it kind of challenges you to kind of step up a little bit and really think about the things that he's writing. Um, one of the most interesting art um, articles that he wrote in here, I guess the chapter of the book, um, is on heat and how it's interesting how we are able to measure time because heat transfers from things that are hot to things that are cold. That's kind of interesting. He, you know, he, he gives the idea of a, of a pendulum, and if a pendulum is rocking forever and there's no heat exchange involved, right, so there's no friction, if it, it'll continue to pendulum back and forth, if you play that in reverse, it's gonna look exactly the same. So without heat, the past looks exactly like the future, and technically time could run in either direction. But because when the pendulum rocks, heat is transferred from things that are hot to things that are cold, and you see the pendulum begin to slow down as friction you know, takes over, um, you can tell that it started by rocking quickly and moved to a point at which it no longer rocks, right? You've never seen a pendulum just spontaneously begin to rock and to rock faster and faster and faster. Um, it just doesn't happen. You'd know if you saw that to be playing in reverse. I thought that was pretty interesting. It really kind of blew my mind uh, the way he talked about time, right? I believe that's you know the, the fifth or sixth chapter uh, in the book. Now, uh, one of the issues that I always have with science writers, and I like to read a lot of science. Um, I read a lot of Scientific American magazines and a different you know a bunch of different magazines uh, that deal with science. One thing that I want all science writers to understand is, for most of them. You are not a philosopher. I just really kind of want to put that out there uh, because I find that a lot of science writers take liberty to begin expounding on the the why, or you know, or they they physics and science mostly deals with the how and what, but then they get into the why uh, and and what it means for us as as people and individuals. Um, it's often really bad philosophy. They make so many logical uh, fallacies and flaws in their logic. Um, it, it's just not good. So don't do that. Stick with the science. The science is really good. I got to the last chapter. He began philosophizing. None of it made any sense. Uh, I saw what he was trying to say, what he was trying to do, but it, 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 it was illogical. It didn't, it didn't follow logic. Again, science, awesome. Stick with it if you're a scientist. If you're a philosopher, stick with philosophy. Um, so that was just kind of my, my contention. Overall, the, it was a really enjoyable read. Uh, I highly recommend it. And one thing that I really want to do is kind of go through my uh, to be read list, all right? also known as a TBR list, of other science books that I have on my to be read list. Um, first up is Understanding Physics by a guy named Isaac Asimov. All right? hopefully you can see that. There's a picture of him on the back. Um, some of you may know who Isaac Asimov is. He's actually a science fiction writer. So. Uh, again, he writes books. He knows how to write books for the general public. He knows how to write so that the general reader is entertained and is brought through the story. And so he really starts, again, from the very beginning of physics, uh, what it was called um, natural philosophy, right? That's, physics was natural philosophy. They believed that there was philosophy that dealt with the mind and thoughts and ideas. And then there was philosophy that dealt with the physical world. So they call it natural philosophy. So from there up through just amazing, crazy, awesome physics. Now I have read some of this um, and it's really good. I highly recommend it if you're interested in physics. Um, Isaac Asimov, there's actually three books on one, that's why it's so thick. But I found this at a used bookstore in uh, Asheville, North Carolina. Um, it's, it's really good, so I recommend that one. Uh, this one was a gift that I got actually from my in-laws. The Evolution of Physics by none other than Albert Einstein. 
and Leopold Enfeld. Um, a lot of books, I believe this book, Seven Brief Lessons in Physics, and um, even uh, the uh, Understanding Physics books makes reference to this one. Now, I haven't got into it. I sometimes have a hard time reading used books for two reasons. One, don't, again, don't judge me, don't vilify me. I'm not a big fan of how really old books smell, right? I kind of have some allergies that kind of make me sneeze a lot, really kind of bothers me. Um, but I love old books, and that's the other reason why sometimes I don't read the old books is because I don't want to mess them up. Uh, I've noticed a lot with the opening of the flap over and over again causes the, you know, the, the binding to, to crack, and I just really kind of want to preserve those. So normally what I'll do is I'll, I'll have this one, I'll check one out from the library, read that one, and, uh, and I have it for reference in the future. And plus it's just cool to have old books, especially have a book by uh, Albert Einstein. It's kind of cool. Um, all right. So again, don't judge me because of the length of my to be read list. I am going to read these. Physics for the rest of us. Again, I believe this one was either a gift or kind of an impulse buy. Um, probably something I got at Barnes and Nobles. It's probably, you know, it's eight bucks. It's probably on sale, 50% off. And so I just picked it up. Just because I like to read this stuff. It, it, it fascinates me. It interests me. And so I, uh, I like to pick them up. And last but not least, Carl Sagan Cosmos. Again, that's my to be read Cosmos by Carl Sagan. Um, and you know, of course, Carl, Carl Sagan is probably part of most of our childhoods doing uh, science programs for the general public. And um, I just find it interesting and find it fascinating. And if you've read any of these books, let me know what you thought of them. Comments below. Um, hopefully you pick up Seven Brief Lessons in Physics. Maybe I'll put a link in the description. Um, I, you know, I, I liked it. And uh, if you have any thoughts or opinions on any of these, again, hit us up on Twitter at, at MyBookStack. Put the comments below. And uh, thanks for liking, commenting, and subscribing, and I'll see you in the next video.